Hello everyone, I'm Mickey Howe with Genius TV, and welcome to another After Effects tutorial. Today, I want to cover the basics of keyframing in After Effects, as this will lay the foundation for all of your future After Effects projects. I'm going to animate a simple lower third, which as you can see is made from a few text layers, a logo from Adobe Illustrator, and a solid that I cut out and added a few effects for my lower third background. So let's get started. I'm going to click on the disclosure triangle which reveals our transform properties. Under transform we have five very important parameters in any 2D layer. They are anchor point, position, scale, rotation, and opacity. If there is only one set of keyboard shortcuts you memorize, then the most important are these. P for position, S for scale, R for rotation, A for anchor point, and T for opacity. I'm going to start our animation with a very simple position movement. Click the stopwatch to add a keyframe. This adds the keyframe wherever your timeline indicator is parked. Once this is done, all that you'll need to do is move your timeline indicator to your desired time and move the position of your layer and an additional keyframe will be added at that point in time. You can move it numerically, just like I did, or graphically. Either way will add your keyframe. So to begin animating this, I'm going to hit P so that the only parameter I am working on is position. And I'm going to move my current keyframe down so that my animation will complete with the current location. Now I'll drag my indicator back to the beginning of my composition and drag my lower third off screen. This adds my starting keyframe. This is also referred to as backwards animation. Okay, this is our first animation, and as you can see, it simply slides from left to right. Another very important thing you should do when animating is shortening your work area like this. This tells After Effects you only want to render this portion of your composition and saves you unnecessary render time. Now let's animate the Illustrator logo. I'm going to type S for scale and R for rotation on my logo layer to expose those two properties. I parked at my last keyframe so I can time my logo to animate with my lower third background. When I confirm that I'm parked at my last keyframe and hit my stopwatches for scale and rotation. Now I'm going to back up to the beginning of my timeline and change my scale to 0% and then I'm going to simply add a keyframe on rotation by clicking the add keyframe area. As you can see, I added a keyframe to the start of my composition and now I can animate the second keyframe with a value of one revolution. Now if I scrub through this, you will see that it rotates one time and scales up. I would like to change the timing of the scale and rotation so that it begins when the background has reached that area. So I will just simply move those keyframes down to that time in my animation. Now you can see the timing is much better. The one thing that I am noticing though is the center of my layer that the logo lives in is actually not the center of the logo. So it looks like it spins off center. To fix this, I will grab the pan behind tool and readjust the anchor point. Let's see, that looks about right. We do not need keyframes for this, as this will be for the entire duration. Let me just move it just a little bit more. Yeah, that looks pretty good. This is only part one of the basic keyframing in After Effects. Stay tuned and we will continue to animate this lower third with some text presets and some various other effects. Thanks for watching and I look forward to seeing you in part two of basic keyframing and After Effects.